Hello, this is a microscopic slide of the esophagus and on the left side is the normal esophagus and over here is a large mass and this is a malignant tumour. Let's have a quick recap of normal esophagus. We have the mucosa which is composed of stratified squamous epithelium. Here is the muscularis mucosa. This pale area is the submucosa and then we have the muscularis propria, and this is the adventitial layer. On closer up view, we can see the stratified squamous epithelium, and there is this preservation of nuclear polarity with the basal cells having more vertically oriented nuclei, and then as we go towards the lumen or towards the surface, you can see that the nuclei are more horizontally oriented or more flattened. And this is normal maturation within the esophageal mucosa. Let's move over to the abnormal area. And we can see that, first of all, on low magnification, that there is a mass and it is formed of these large islands of abnormal cells. And these islands, uh, we can just trace the muscularis mucosa here. These islands invade through the mucosa, coming down to the level just below the muscularis mucosa, and in fact, definitely entering the submucosa. And in this area, we can actually see the invasive islands of cells coming into the muscularis propria. And in fact, in this area, we can actually see that it is between the layers of the muscularis propria. So this is an invasive tumor. And on higher magnification, uh, we can see that the cells form these very large sheets and islands. They are not gland forming. And in fact, if you notice, there are a lot of these swirly things within uh, the sheets of invasive cells. And they are very pink in color. And these are keratin pearls. This presence of keratin pearls is a feature of squamous differentiation. At higher magnification, we can appreciate the malignant features of the cells, namely nuclear pleomorphism. We have quite a significant uh, variation in size and shape from one nucleus to another. For example, this very large nucleus is quite a lot larger compared to this smaller nucleus. So there is variation in size. We can also see that some nuclei are rounder, some nuclei are much more irregular and many of the nuclei contain prominent nucleoli. Looking around, it's also very easy to find mitotic figures. There is one here, and there is also a mitotic figure here. And the presence of these readily identified mitotic figures, another one here, is also a feature of malignancy. So we have nuclear enlargement, nuclear membrane irregularity, nuclear pleomorphism, and increased mitotic figures, and all these are nuclear features or cytomorphologic features of malignancy. This is an example of squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, and this of course makes sense because the normal lining of the esophagus is that of stratified squamous epithelium, and therefore the malignancy of the mucosa would tend to be squamous cell carcinoma. In the more distal esophagus, there can be glandular metaplasia as well as intestinal metaplasia, and this is known as Barrett esophagus, and therefore this can actually give rise to dysplasia and adenocarcinoma. The other thing I want to point out is that if you look at the stroma around these large sheets of invasive squamous cells, you'll notice that the stroma is quite cellular. And it is comprised of these very plump cells. These are fibroblasts and also a scattering of inflammatory cells. So this kind of disturbed stromal appearance, a more cellular stromal appearance, this is known as desmoplasia. And this often accompanies invasive carcinoma. Let's do a quick comparison with the lamina propria in an area without cancer, and you'll see that it is a lot less cellular. There's only a very, very occasional sprinkling of inflammatory cells, and we do not see that proliferation of plump fibroblasts. So in summary, 
we have here an invasive tumor arising in the esophagus. The tumor is composed of large sheets and islands of malignant cells with prominent keratin pearls, and there is a surrounding desmoplastic stroma. And this tumor invades through the submucosa into the muscularis propria of the esophagus. Thank you.